now we're going to build the database tables that we need to store the transactions that we make. This is pretty important because otherwise we would have to rely on sessions to hold this data. And that's generally not a good idea. You can do this, but it's much better to store it in a database. Um, obviously, we're also going to be creating the users table, which allows us to create some kind of value to this test application that we're building. So the first table then is the users table. Let's create this here. I'm just working with a database name called site. Uh, we've got an ID. If you're using a, any other application to manage your database, you can need this to be unsigned, obviously an integer. It needs to be a primary key and also have an auto increment. So this increments for each user. So we're going to have a username. That's going to be a var chart of say 20 characters. Doesn't really matter in this sort of test environment. The email is going to be a var chart, just say 255. And we're also going to have a member flag, which is going to be a Boolean, which is essentially a tiny int length of one. And basically this is just the flag to say, are they a member or not? So let's enter some data in here. Let's enter a username and let's enter a email address and then member will set to zero. So we've got a test user. We're going to set a session within our application to uh, relate to ID of one, which is going to mean that we're sort of faking a user login. So the next table then is going to be the table that specifically holds transaction data for PayPal. So we're going to call this transactions PayPal. The reason I'm appending transactions is because you may have other payment providers. For example, if you're uh, using another service to make payments, you may have another transactions table. So it's a good idea to prefix this just so they both make sense. So again, we've got an ID here. And this time what we're going to store is a user ID. So we need to know which um, user this relates to. We're going to have a payment ID, which is generated by PayPal. Uh, I'm going to set this as a Varchar 255. It's not as long as this, but for testing purposes, this doesn't really matter. We're also going to have a hash. We're going to generate this ourselves. This is basically going to be a hash of the payment ID. So we can store this in a session. And what that means is we can actually persist uh, some data. So when we're returned back from PayPal, we at least know what this relates to. So again, pretty straightforward is a complete flag, which is a Boolean. This is obviously going to be zero or one. Now, when a user actually goes off to PayPal, we're going to store a record here just so we can keep track of any transactions that are being made. And then we can flag them as complete when we actually make the charge to the user. So this is pretty straightforward and it's not too difficult to understand, hopefully. So with that done, let's move on to the next video where we're going to be setting up our application to actually uh, have a user signed in, a sort of fake session. And then we're going to start to build some of the PayPal functionality after that.